Right, hello everybody. Uh, this is the first um, lesson I'm going to try and do from my back garden. Uh, it's on mass flow theory, so if you're following along at home, it's on page 12 in the uh, in the transporting plants booklet. So let's see how this goes, shall we? Here we can see a plant. Very well drawn. I'm sure you'd agree, uh, agree there. Um, the plant basically we've got leaves at the top, roots down at the bottom. Now, at the leaves, obviously they capture light uh, and through photosynthesis produce a photosynthetic product. That includes glucose as well as a number of other carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, etc. Now we're just going to focus on the carbohydrates. Sorry, my son's playing in the garden. Um, we're going to focus on carbohydrates and we need to know that the, the glucose is transported in the plant as sucrose. And that all happens at the leaves that we refer to as the source. So, if we look from our little diagram to the bigger one, uh, this is the one that's on page 12, you'll see we've got uh, a mesophyll cell here. The mesophyll cell, so it may be a palisade mesophyll cell containing lots of chloroplasts. I'm so in the chloroplasts are the thylakoid membranes and the thylakoid membranes and the stroma are where the photosynthetic reactions are taking place. So it's at the mesophyll cells where those photosynthetic products are produced. And the one that we're most interested in is sucrose. So sucrose is actively transported into this cell alongside the mesophyll cell which is called a companion cell and sometimes those companion cells are adapted we can see here this one's got a larger surface area and it's adapted for transferring the products from the mesophyll cell into uh, the sieve tubes this is what we refer to as the sieve tube element and we can see uh, it's not quite a continuous column, there are still the remnants of the, um, of the cell wall uh, that form the sieve plates. Uh, but there are spaces between those sieve plates where products can be transferred. Let's go back up here then to the mesophyll cell. There the sucrose is produced through photosynthesis and uh, produces glucose uh, and then sucrose is produced afterwards. The sucrose is actively transported by the companion cell into the companion cell. Now it's not as simple as direct active transport, it's actually an example of co-transport. So the companion cell actively transports protons into the mesophyll cell and then that produces a high concentration of protons in the mesophyll cell. They diffuse down their concentration gradients and bring with them the sucrose. So, sucrose moves from the mesophyll cell first into the companion cell or the transfer cell. And then from the transfer cell, they are um, actively transported uh, again into. Uh, the sieve tube elements. Okay, so where I've got red arrows here, that's showing that active transport. Okay, into the sieve tube elements like so. Now, when that happens, the accumulation of the sucrose in the sieve tube at the source, so this is at the leaves, close to where photosynthesis is happening, that lowers the water potential of this sieve tube element. So we have a lower water potential. Okay, a little trident to represent the water potential there. The phloem made up of these sieve tube elements is alongside xylem vessels. And those xylem Vessels contain water. Uh, now, we, what we find is, because we've got a low water potential in the 
flowing in the sieve tube elements and a much higher water potential in the xylem, water moves by osmosis from the xylem and into the sieve tube elements, into the phloem at the source. Okay? Now, that continues because more and more sucrose is moving from the uh, from the mesophyll cell into the companion cell, then from the companion cell into the uh, phloem. Water follows from the xylem by osmosis. Remember, it's really important that you include these signs of how that's being transported in your uh, exam responses. So osmosis of water, and then we've got anywhere we see a red arrow with active transport and that creates with the accumulation of water and the accumulation of sucrose a really high pressure okay so a high hydrostatic let me get rid of that there pressure in the flow at the source now, with that high pressure produced up here, uh, we're just going to leave that for now, and we're going to have a look at what happens at the sink. Now, the sink may be the roots. Often sucrose is stored in the roots, um, but really the sink can be anywhere where respiration is taking place. So we tend to think of it as the growing parts of the plant. For the sake of this diagram, I'm going to imagine that. That's the, that's the roots. But the sink is basically where that glucose is being transported to and where it will be used, or where those photosynthetic products will be used. So down here, the uh, plant tissues, which are uh, requiring that sucrose, requiring uh, respiration, they actively transport sucrose from the phloem, from these, this sieve tube element, element sorry, uh, and into the sink, into the cells of the sink. Again, this is active transport in red, is active transport. That is going to uh, increase the water potential. Okay, now we've got a higher water potential in the phloem at the sink because we've lost all of that sucrose from the flow, and so now it's just water. So, the opposite is happening here. We've got uh, the active transport of the sucrose out of the flow, causes an increase in the water potential. Now I've got a high water potential, so water moves out of the flow, by osmosis. You've probably predicted what's going to happen now with the pressure. Now we've lost the sucrose, we've lost the water, so there's a very low hydrostatic pressure here. We've got a low hydrostatic pressure in the flow at the sink because Sucrose has been actively transported out and water has been has moved out by osmosis back into these xylem vessels. Now that water is just going to continue its pathway up through the xylem vessels. Some may move by or osmosis into that other xylem vessel, but again, that's just going to move back up to the top of the plant through those processes of uh, transpiration and collate blah, blah, blah. Cohesion tension theory. Right, if we go back to the flow though, we can see now so we've got high pressure at the source, low pressure at the sink. The products, the sucrose, the products of photosynthesis, just travel via their hydrostatic pressure gradient. So they travel down through the flow along down their hydrostatic pressure gradient 
from the source to the sink. Okay, and that's mass flow, sometimes referred to this movement of the sucrose referred to as translocation. And I think that'll do for the first video. Uh, be kind, leave nice comments, like and subscribe. Thank you.